Now in Canada, in, in Canada we find the, the, the Muslim population is uh, projected to be about um, one million people um, next year and, uh, and maybe 1.5 million people or 4.8 percent of the population by 2017. So you, you say to yourself, well that's a big enough critical mass to allow uh, f to, to interest the bankers and have them uh, go into this, um, this uh, subset of the mortgage market. Based on international experience, our sense, or my sense anyway, is that Islamic housing finance is very much supply driven rather than demand driven. So, uh, so from that basis, I'd say it's difficult to know whether this large and vibrant Muslim population in Canada will in fact translate into a, um, a, a good chunk of the housing market for the Muslim community actually being um, uh, Sharia compliant. Um, but what we saw in our, our comparative study um, is that um, uh, it is very much, in every country we looked at where there, there seemed to be a large take-up rate, be it Malaysia, uh, increasingly in Pakistan, in the U.S., we found that Islamic finance was supply-driven. So once you're over the regulatory hurdles that might exist, it will really depend on the ability of of those institutions who want to, to get into the market to uh, really sell their product and convince the, the, the Muslim community why it's better for them. And in that sense, I, I still continue to think that the smaller, uh, more uh, focused and segmented institutions that are dedicated to uh, Sharia compliant finance will will probably uh, continue to, to be uh, much more successful than the large banks could be where Islamic finance could be nothing more than a small window. So I will leave it at that for now. Invite comments and from others. Thank you, Guy. Our next speaker um, will be uh, Omar Kaler. So <clears throat> internationally, Islamic mortgages in, in Western markets have been structured uh, on one of three ways. Um, ijara, which is leasing, uh, murabaha, which is basically buying the property and selling it at a higher price, or musharaka, which is a partnership. Here in Canada, when we started our research out and working with the credit unions and, and, and looking to see if we could fit any of these products into their retail distribution, there were inherent risks, uh, inherent reasons why they could not. Uh, on the leasing side, the Ijada product, uh, with OSFI, there's concentration limits of how much real estate a financial institution can hold. So we, when we went to them, they, they would already say that they already maxed out at 10%, so they didn't have an appetite to do leasing directly on their balance sheets. On a Murabaha product, um, there, was, there was issues in terms of Canada. The mortgage market is basically structured on five-year terms, uh, unlike the U.S. And, U and the U.K. where it's longer term. So buying and selling a property for a five-year term was too expensive uh, for the clients. <coughs> With Musharaka, uh, where you're basically stating you're a partner, um, and when a lawyer sees a contract where the, the word partnership is included, it opens up a whole area of litigation. Um, so that was too risky for them. So the only option that was available is that we could obtain a funding line ourselves, and then we could go then to the community and structure the product. So this is just one reason why some of the Canadian banks and credit unions aren't really offering Islamic mortgages at a retail level directly because of these regulatory changes. <coughs> The other thing that we, we, we try to educate individuals and institutions is there's been some past attempts in terms of entering the Islamic finance market, which have been on the investment side. Um, right now, within the community, if you go to a thousand members of our community who have conventional mortgages and you try to sell them investment products, the uptake is very low because the, the correlation, the view for the average individual is that they're already paying interest on their home. Why would they have their investment Sharia compliant? So what we educate people is that Islamic finance is holistic. It's similar to kosher meat or halal meat. Either you're going to do it all the time or you're not going to do it at all. So this is where a home is sacred. <clears throat> Once you get a person having their mortgage structured to be Sharia compliant, then you can have that client sell them any investment product, any credit card or the couple insurance product. But the home is always sacred. So our push has always been to find a solution on the home side. 
At the moment, uh, we have about 6,000 clients um, who have registered with us, who have conventional mortgages with the, uh, the, the conventional market, who want to switch over for compliancy reasons. And this is where the average mortgage on our uh, portfolio is roughly 200000 So that alone represents a $1.2 billion market. Um, so this is where there is a huge demand, in our view, in, for Islamic mortgages here in Canada. From the CMHC study, uh, the interesting numbers that, uh, that Guy has pointed out, that the, the U.S. Uh, mortgage market is actually larger than the U.K. And the U.S. market has been funded by, uh, by Freddie Mac. But the U.K. also has some different traits about its Muslim community. One is that its community ha had arrived in, in the U.K. a lot earlier, in the 50s and 60s. So most of the community already has paid off homes. So there's not a huge market for Islamic mortgages. Unlike here in Canada, where majority of the community has come in the 80s, 90s, everyone is carrying a mortgage. So there is a huge demand for mortgages. So this is where you see in the U.S. where the Canadian population mimics it, you see a large uptake in the, uh, the mortgage market. My turn. Okay. Thank you. Um, our next speaker will be uh, Thomas Gaynor. Hi, it's me again. Uh, guidance Residential uh, to, to date, uh, it's Reston, based, Reston Virginia based. Uh, Islamic Financial Services uh, home finance company and to date has originated just shy of uh, two billion dollars worth of uh, home financings. We have about 60 people uh, in the home office. We have 15 uh, field people throughout the United States, uh, salespeople. Uh, we've spent a tremendous amount of money and a tremendous amount of effort in building a, a brand, uh, recognizing the importance of that. Uh, I'm here to, you know, to share my experiences with you to try to help you in building your, your, your uh, business and serving this uh, community. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to, I wish I had a lot of time to, or enough time to talk about the story of Guidance Residential. I think it's an interesting one. Uh, I spoke a little bit earlier about the, the goal of being a, a company that was an integrated financial services company where we had the home financing um, company that, where these contracts were securitized and then distributed in mutual funds. Uh, I, can, I think I can answer just about any question in building Islamic uh, home financings because I was part of a group of about five people back in 2000 that sat around and said, does mortgage banking re uh, apply to us? You know, we, we were actually asking some very fundamental questions as far as uh, who is, who, the, the GSEs, who are they, and what are they, uh, what are they all about? We, uh, I've been fortunate enough to have a very uh, <clears throat> determined and knowledgeable chairman, Dr. Mohammed Amor, who founded this company, and he um, put together a team of people. He he brought in early uh, on a person who was uh, very high up in the Mortgage Bankers Association, had been retired, and he was really sort of shepherded us and explaining all of this stuff to us. He brought in people who had uh, Sharia practitioners. Uh, he brought in um, just a team. I mean, that it, was, it was developing a team for the long term. Uh, Sharia scholars, a uh, very critical part of our, of our team. Uh, Sheikh Nizam and, and others on our board have just been very supportive and, and really have been critical in, in our credibility and in building the, that, that brand and in really the built-in quality in the product itself. Uh, we, we had to go over a number of different things right from the beginning as far as, uh, Omar, you mentioned about the structure. You know, which structure would we use? We looked at the three. We determined Marabaha was out right away because we felt that that was not a good model for securitization. And since our goal was to securitize, that was out. Uh, we looked at the other two, and we uh, selected the, the Musharaka co-ownership program, and I also get I get a little antsy when people talk about it being a partnership also when I see it in the documents because of the legal connotations. But the, the co-ownership agreement defines the rights and responsibilities of the, of the, of the parties. Um, a lot of times my, you know, what, what is Islamic finance? Really, Islamic finance is complying with two sets of laws, the law of the land and the Sharia law. Um, so when we started, a lot of times when you start to build products, you um, oftentimes especially in this regulated industry, the home financings and the fact that we wanted to participate in the secondary market, we pretty much, and I know one of the questions earlier, why don't you start from a different maybe a mindset in developing an Islamic product? We started with the some of the existing documentation that was out there in the conventional and Islamatized it. We had to change the whole way of looking at that document from a debtor-creditor relationship 
to one of characterization of co-owners in the property and how they were going to manage and, and, and run that, that co-ownership.